Hi, right, good evening. Welcome back to MCM Outdoors. It's a very cold day. We're back out on another local walk. We're on a stretch of the footpath near me called Lady Alice's Walk. And we're going to be heading towards Roughwood. We're going to go through Roughwood uh, toward West Head and back on ourselves down Cranes Lane in a big loop. And hope you're going to enjoy the ride as per usual. Pretty limited again in terms of scenery, it's just what's on the old doorstep. But yeah, it's a cold one. We're back outdoors, and that's that's all that matters. So let's enjoy it. Fair scenery points out the higher ground is Greetby Hill. There's a lovely old water tower there. But once again, well, I've got the wellies on today. Forewarned as forearmed after the last debacle. <laughs> right. Less talking, more walking. So this is among the top, I think top five of my local walks. I normally enjoy a few snacks on the bench down there. And there was a funny incident when uh, my children were little and uh, Emily dropped a pork pie in the mud and there was a bit of a Labrador, sniffed it out and then came to see what other treats she had in her hands. That was quite a funny one. Um, yeah, but as you say, or as I say, to my to my left and your right is Greepy Hill, and we're going to be going through rough wood. I'll tell you a little bit more about it as we progress along the walk. Anyway, if we look across to our left, these expansive fields, the trees on the horizon, border Ormsgate Golf Course, which you've seen on a previous video recently. It's so cold, it really is cold, bitingly cold wind. It's an easterly wind, so it's blowing across all that cold continental air mass from Europe. You know, at this time of year, it's biting the easterly wind. That's where it's come from, so it's very cold. The forecast tomorrow. There's possibly a bit of snow, so if that happens, I'll get out again on another local walk. And again, I can't wait until we're allowed back out further afield. I can go back to the Lake District and the Peak District and North Wales. I'm really missing North Wales. Just got to keep plodding on, on your local trails make the most of it. The more I'm doing, I'm really fine, then I'm coughing less. The old effects of COVID, and I'm granted I'm lucky. Uh, it's just subsiding more and more. So every couple of days or every other day, if I can, just get out on these walks, try and keep a brisk pace, build the old fitness up and start getting back on my mountain bike as well. Anyway, this isn't a face mask. I'm not wearing face masks in the open. It's me buff, just to keep my nose warm, because it is freezing. <sighs> Normally trundling down here on the mountain bike, shake the old fillings out. Really pick it up now, that wind. It's rattling through. The left side of my face is absolutely frozen. I know I keep saying it, I have a tendency to do that, but it is just so bitter, such a bitter easterly wind. 
we get a bit of protection in the woodland and hopefully the audio isn't too bad on this but yes lots of twisted oaks pines lots of different species of trees and as usual there's hordes of people congregating in here as well oh dearie me so let's get in rough wood Seven point nine hectare, nineteen point five two acres mixed woodland with an old quarry situated at its heart in the nineteenth century provided sandstone for buildings in Ormskirk. Provides a habitat for a wide range of flora and fauna and is perfect location for rest and relaxation. Green woodpecker, tree creepers, and the sculptures dotted about here as well. First map reference in seventeen eighty six. And it used to be known as Scarth Hill Wood. It was bought by Thomas Holcroft in 1912 to stop it being used for housing. Then he donated it to the council for the benefit of the people of Ormskirk. A water tower stood in rough wood from 1932 to 1976. It held 120,000 gallons and was one of four providing water to Ormskirk, Latham and Bersco. It's not known when quarry operations began and the quarry closed in 1858. In 1857, the Ormskirk advertiser carried an advert for rough quarry supplying building stone, sand and grit. Boreholes and chisel marks can be seen on the quarry face today and we'll go and have a look at that. But it's a fascinating area, like most places around here. It's steeped in history and I love that, love that about it. And the best thing is getting off the beaten path like this leave the path behind and go and explore much better idea but yeah there's lots of tree species fungi mushrooms it's really fascinating to come at different times of the year and see how it changes lots of twisted oaks pines with this gnarly bark, nice open pattern texture to it, just gives an indication as to how old some of the trees are in this area. And here's a bit of the quarry, the sandstone, you can just see the outcrops there. I mean, it's covered in moss, but that is the sandstone, the strata. You can see some of the layers, it's almost horizontal. When we look at rocks, we talk at things, talk of things called strike and dip, which is essentially the angle that the rocks lay. And I'll see if I can demonstrate that for you. On this little section here, you can see what appears to be layers, like horizontal segments in the rock. And that is essentially, it runs in this plane. That's what we refer to, like layers of a cake the strike and dip if it's at an angle when I did my degree in geology in years gone by I got a compass clinometer which is a bit of a fancy compass with a different way of measuring the angle of rock the strata I've still got it it's in the loft somewhere I'll have to dig it out but we'll keep exploring and see what we can see we're gonna head out the wood and follow hopefully a nice quiet lane toward Latham show you this lovely church let's go this is one of my favorite houses it's not long being built and I watched it getting constructed over the months look at that mezzanine level with the chairs and huge windows which look out over those views towards Pendle Winter Hill absolutely what a mega property I take it I'm not alone in doing this and everyone you know when you're walking along you're looking at these places thinking god you know you just love to have that it's nice isn't it but material things I mean I can talk over the years I've bought lots of climbing stuff um, maybe too much 
it's not really what matters in life is it it's just enjoying yourself being happy being healthy um, and the same for your family and loved ones it's just random tales of morality and deep psychology within these videos but all of these houses are lovely we're on Vicarage Lane travelling toward Westhead Here's the church spire. There's a buzzard, another one. Spoke about them on the last video. Bootio, bootio. Look at that. And there's the water tower. That's a different water tower, different view of it. If you recall on the last video, I showed you the old one, the square one, and at the start of this on Greepy Hill. And this one's referred to as the UFO or the flying saucer because that's what it looks like that war of the worlds nice bit of colour winter pastel shades in the sky over there and hopefully fingers crossed this church is is quiet there's no one there it's normally around about now that someone will just burst out from a hole in the ground and scupper me speaking plans but here's the church it is very photogenic i've never been inside but i would like to it's very very relaxing it's a nice calm place yeah look at that how nice is that I think this is original. What is the name for this? Is it like a nave? I can't remember. But there's some inscriptions into the sandstone. It's all original. The original oak. Erected in 18, and then this bit of sandstone has fallen off. You can see here. So it's 18 something. And again, there's some inscriptions on the top beam there. It's lovely. It'd be a nice place to have a beer. Probably wouldn't be respectful, but it'd just be nice, wouldn't it? Look at that, ideal height. So peaceful, just with the sound of the wind. Big yew tree there. I think my dad's, I mean, there's a little flicker of inside. But I think, I said to my dad, why is there always yew trees in churchyards? And he said that yew trees um, put roots up, you know, to sprout new ones, and they signify new life. So, that was me dad put me onto that. But just how nice is it? So it's a nice building. Quite often, I'll come and just sit here with a flask or a little craft beer and look out and watch the world go by. It's a nice spot. It's very relaxing and peaceful. Absolutely gorgeous. That lovely sunset there through the pines. Really nice. Really nice. The water tower, the sunset, and this lovely building. Nice stained glass windows. How nice. 
we're coming out on some grassland where they grow turf, turf nursery, the turf land, mud bath. It's just a quagmire. Right. That was a goldfinch I'm flying out. How about this for the perfect pitch? If anyone from Hillerberg's watching this, obviously you all are, you know. Let's get together and do a big collab on this field. I'll bring the drone, bring all your tents, we'll set them all up and um, do a review or an overview of every single model in your range. How about that? Or other cracking tent makers, Nordisk, to make it happen. Imagine that. That'd be a good video. Right. Another nice property. I'm going to skirt along this, get back on the lanes. We're heading to Castle Lane. Oh, I can smell smell a real fire or a coal fire just on the on the wind. Oh, it's lovely. It just invokes nice nice warm feelings. <laughs> You've got to laugh. Oh, I'm walking around where I live with a GoPro and a mic talking to myself. Jesus Christ, what has it come to? <laughs> you put that brick there. Come out of nowhere. But yeah. I don't know, I'll talk some absolute nonsense. A lot of people have remarked that. I'm actually quite a shy person. But when it's just me and a camera, I think I could possibly talk non-stop for 24 hours if it came to it. I'm not like this in real life. At least I don't think I am. Waffle, waffle head. So we're going down this lane. It's gonna bring us out. Let's use this to our advantage. It's gonna bring us out on the main road to West Head and Ormskirk in that direction. There's going to be one giant loop. One small step for man. One giant waffly loop for mankind. Look at that. Look at those skies. I'm turning this off and taking some pictures. Let's get some pictures of this sunset. Hopefully that camera's not going to blow over. Lovely hues in the sky there. That's nice. Let's get one for 16 by 9. Hashtag thumbnail. Yeah, so it's another hidden giveaway. I always say you've got to watch the videos through to their entirety. No skipping. Watch them all the way to the end to find out where I'm going to put these. But yeah, one lucky winner is going to win the actual torch I've got with me now. It's brand new and it was kindly sent to me by Through Night and it's a TC12 version 2. I'll leave some specs for the torch in the description box below and uh, if you just comment, let me know in the comments after whatever you're saying, I'm in. And you've got two weeks from when the video is posted. I will then use that as a cut-off date, use a random comment generator and pick one and I'll post the torch off to you, but it's cracking. Comes in a great little, uh, well it comes with a sturdy carry pouch, a lanyard, um, a nice clip for attaching it onto various different things. Got a nice charging cable with it, it charges up via, via USB, which is it all included. And it is mega bright, nice tactical torch. And uh, I'll be doing a review on it in a later video and I will announce the winner of the torch in that review video. So I think that's a good way of doing it. So all you've got to do is say, I'm in, in the comments, and um, two weeks from making this one live. And you'll be the lucky winner of the torch. I'm going to be using a bit later on, and in a subsequent video.
might even just stop in there for a few minutes just to do a battery change got really cold so we need to crack on now I was going to say we're losing the light but we've got the torch anyway we've done 2.18 miles I'll just turn this torch on there we go a couple of different brightness settings it's got like a a firefly you know the lowest mode this will all be covered in full detail that's obviously to blind blind attackers when the wolves attack <laughs> defense as our friends in the states would say here in the uk we uh, don't have torches for that purpose so it's got one two three four one two three four couple of different brightness settings double click just to access its highest and you can operate the torch from the tail cap on off switch as well nice little LED on the button as well just lets you know it's illuminated but it's very bright for now we'll turn it off you get a clip with which to attach it to pockets and what have you um, well, it's a good bit of kit I'll just put it in this pocket here and you'll be getting this one this torch right let's make our way the remainder of the walk back to the car so we're on the closing stretches of this walk now folks you know I'm hopeful I don't know how long this these episodes of local walks are going to go on for it's obviously only because of lockdown but you know if people would like me to continue them I will um, but obviously I'll be going back to the normal wild camping as soon as I can um, but yeah we're working our way down Castle Lane now if we're lucky there's normally a lot of tawny owls certainly as we're on the approach back to the car and uh, the male ones um, I mean the Latin name Strix Aluco it's always good to uh, to know things like that so yeah remember that Strix Aluco and the male version is the sort of typical to it to woo uh, owl sound it's unmistakable the females sound very different like a higher pitched doesn't sound like a typical owl and you probably wouldn't know it was an owl um, but yeah the male uh, territorial and call to attract a mate is the normal to it to woo I'll try and find a sound effect and drop it, but let's carry on. So as we wind our way back on this one, we're uh, rewarded by the final views in the setting sun of Greetby Hill, the old water tower, and some lovely colours as the sun, or the last of the sun's light fades away. So going back to the subject of tawny owls, it's normally a good time to try and spot them but you can obviously normally hear them and pinpoint the general area where they are they're very hard to spot in day because they're obviously nocturnal and they tend to sit um, where the branch meets the tree so if you're looking up into areas like this come and use your torch have a little look where branches meet the main trunk and you can spot them a lot of other time as well you'll hear other birds mobbing them especially in the day so if you hear a big racket uh, in areas like this you can hear the other birds alarm calls and what have you they'll be mobbing tawny owls and obviously sometimes other predators as well but that's another clue to their location right folks i'll wrap it up i'll wrap it up here because I want to enjoy the next 15 minutes without rabbling to the camera. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's local, but I'm just doing what I can to keep some content coming for you. If you've liked it, please take half a second to hit the thumbs up button. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out. I always ask, please, uh, it'd be great if you do that. If you're not a subscriber to MCM Outdoors, check out the back catalogue. There's loads of videos for you to watch and hopefully something amongst it which you will like. I've had a great time here in the local area to me, just in the evening winter sun. 
lovely you know a couple of hours spent outside the house works wonders it's really really nice don't forget if you want to be in with a chance to win this torch that i'm holding now just comment i'm in i'm going to close the comments two weeks after i make the video live and then i will announce the winners when i show you the review video for this cracking bit of kit thanks again through night for making this giveaway possible but for now I'm going to finish this one and look for Tony Owls on my own with the camera off. I'll see you on the next adventure. Look out for each other and take care.